Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video on our channel, Immortal News. Today, we will be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes, and today's top headline section with an exclusive update, revealing the long-awaited cause of death for former Tarzan TV series star Ron Ely, shared here first with our audience. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin. Thank you. Number 8. Julio Medina, a remarkable actor who graced American television and film for decades, built a legacy as one of the earliest Latinos to find success in Hollywood. Born on January 16, 1933, he was drawn to performance and storytelling from an early age. He pursued his passion at the Pontifical Xavierian University and later refined his craft at the Pasadena Playhouse after moving to the United States in 1954. His time in the U.S. Navy shaped his discipline and determination, both of which would define his career. Medina debuted in the iconic series Gunsmoke and became a familiar face on American screens, appearing in I Dream of Genie, The Rockford Files, Dallas and Kung Fu, among others. His versatility as an actor shown as he seamlessly transitioned between dramatic and comedic roles, earning acclaim for his ability to bring authenticity and depth to his characters. He also appeared in notable films like Zoot Suit and Little Nikita, sharing the screen with stars such as Michael Douglas and Sally Field. After nearly three decades in Los Angeles, Medina returned to Colombia in 1984, where he continued his acting career in telenovelas like Las Aguas Mansas and films such as Malcriados. His performances enriched the entertainment landscapes of both the U.S. and Colombia. Medina's life was as colorful off-screen as it was on. A self-proclaimed bachelor, he embraced solitude and spent his later years reflecting on a fulfilling career. He lived modestly in a rural Colombian home, cherishing the quiet moments of his retirement. Julio Medina passed away at the age of 91. His contributions to Hollywood and Latin American cinema will be celebrated for generations. Tributes to Julio Medina Number 7. Tony Price, a celebrated country blues vocalist and a cornerstone of Austin's music scene, captivated audiences with her soulful voice and distinctive style. Born on March 13, 1961 in Philadelphia, Price discovered her passion for singing early. At age 10, she performed in a Nashville talent show, where she adopted the name Tony Price, foreshadowing her future as a music icon. Though her roots were in Nashville, Price found her true artistic home in Austin, Texas, in 1989. Her arrival marked the beginning of a 30-year love affair with the city's vibrant music scene. Price quickly became a fixture at Antone's nightclub and cultivated her legacy through her beloved Hippie Hour residency at the Continental Club, which ran for over two decades. Her honeyed alto brought new life to compositions by acclaimed songwriters like Gwil Owen and Blaze Foley. Though she didn't write her own songs, Price redefined artistry by transforming others' work with her unique interpretations, earning accolades such as Best Female Vocals and Album of the Year at the Austin Music Awards. Price's music was both accessible and intimate, drawing fans to her weekly shows rather than embarking on national tours. Her albums, including Swim Away and Hey, remain among Austin's bestsellers, solidifying her reputation as a local treasure. Despite her success, Price always stayed true to her principles, advocating for fair artist compensation and voicing her concerns with industry practices. Offstage, she was a devoted mother and a spirited advocate for her community. Tony Price passed away at the age of 63 following complications from a brain aneurysm. Her legacy of authenticity, artistry, and community spirit will continue to inspire generations. Tributes to Tony Price. Number 6. Mike Panera, 
an American guitarist, singer, songwriter, and producer, captivated audiences with his versatile musical talent and innovative contributions to rock music. Born on September 29, 1948 in Tampa, Florida, Panera showed an early passion for music, honing his skills in local garage bands before achieving widespread acclaim. As the lead vocalist and guitarist for Blues Image, Panera co-wrote and performed their iconic 1970 hit, Ride Captain Ride, a song that reached number one, four on the Billboard charts, and remains a staple of classic rock radio. His musical journey then led him to join Iron Butterfly, where his groundbreaking use of the guitar talk box on Metamorphosis's track Butterfly Blue showcased his innovative artistry. Panera continued to break boundaries, forming Ramatam with Mitch Mitchell of the Jimi Hendrix Experience and later the New Cactus Band. Throughout his career, Panera collaborated with legends like Alice Cooper, playing lead guitar in Cooper's band during the late 1970s and early 1980s. As a solo artist, Panera released Isla, 1977, and Forever, 1979, with the latter producing the Billboard charting single, Good Night My Love. Beyond music, Panera's creative spirit extended to producing and mentoring emerging talents. Despite his professional achievements, he remained deeply connected to his roots, using the success of Ride Captain Ride to pay off his parents' home, a testament to his generosity and family devotion. Mike Panera passed away at the age of 76 from liver failure. His legacy as a pioneering guitarist and songwriter lives on, inspiring generations of musicians and fans alike. Tributes to Mike Panera. Number 5. T.J. Swan, a pioneering vocalist and integral member of the iconic Juice Crew, left an indelible mark on the evolution of hip-hop during its formative years. Born and raised in Queensbridge, New York, Swan was introduced to music through the rich cultural tapestry of his neighborhood. His early exposure to soul and R&B profoundly shaped his artistic identity, blending seamlessly with the burgeoning hip-hop scene of the 1980s. Swan's career took flight when he joined the Juice Crew, a groundbreaking collective led by DJ Mr. Magic and Marley Marl under Cold Chillin' Records. His collaborations with Biz Markey and MC Shan became legendary, with his smooth, soulful vocals gracing tracks like Make the Music with Your Mouth Biz, Nobody Beats the Biz, and Left Me Lonely. These songs not only achieved critical and commercial success but also highlighted Swan's role in shaping the melodic dimension of hip-hop, a genre often dominated by beats and rhymes. Swan's influence extended far beyond the Juice Crew's peak. His memorable hook from Left Me Lonely was sampled in Big Gip and Nelly's hit Grills, proving his lasting relevance in music. Beyond his artistry, Swan was known for his humility and dedication to uplifting his peers, becoming a cherished figure within the hip-hop community. T.J. Swan passed away at the age of 57. Tributes poured in from industry legends like Roxanne Shante, Jazzy Jeff, and Killer Mike, all celebrating his transformative impact on hip-hop. While his life was tragically cut short, Swan's contributions remain timeless, continuing to inspire generations of artists and fans alike. Tributes to TJ Swan. Number 4. Jody Rell, an influential leader and a trailblazer in Connecticut politics, dedicated her life to public service and advocacy. Born Mary Carolyn Rivas on June 16, 1946 in Norfolk, Virginia, she grew up in a family that instilled values of service and resilience. She attended Old Dominion University before leaving to support her husband, Lou Rell, a Navy pilot, and settled in Brookfield, Connecticut, where she began her political journey. 
Rell's career was marked by steadfast dedication to Connecticut. Starting as a state representative in 1985, she rose to prominence as lieutenant governor in 1995. In 2004, following John Rowland's resignation, she became the 87th governor of Connecticut, serving until 2011. As governor, Rell earned the highest approval ratings in state history and achieved groundbreaking milestones. She championed fiscal responsibility, supported public campaign financing reforms, and advocated for education and healthcare advancements. Under her leadership, Connecticut was the first state to adopt civil unions without judicial intervention, reflecting her commitment to equality. A proponent of bipartisanship, Rell was known for her pragmatic approach, balancing conservative fiscal policies with progressive stances on social issues like abortion rights and stem cell research. Her tenure saw significant policy advancements, including criminal justice reforms and infrastructure improvements, while maintaining Connecticut's high educational standards. Beyond politics, Rell was a devoted mother, grandmother, and community member. Her resilience shone through her personal battle with breast cancer in 2004, a journey she navigated with grace and determination. She received numerous honorary degrees, recognizing her contributions to public service. Jody Rell passed away at the age of 78. Her legacy as a compassionate leader, a unifying force, and a trailblazer for women in politics endures, inspiring future generations. Tributes to Jody Rell. Number three, Kirk Schuring, a dedicated public servant whose career spanned over three decades, was a pillar of Ohio's political landscape. Born on September 17, 1952, Schuring grew up in Stark County, Ohio, where he developed a passion for leadership and community engagement. After joining his family's insurance agency in 1978, he quickly rose to prominence in civic organizations, laying the groundwork for his political journey. In 1993, Schuring began his legislative career in the Ohio House of Representatives, where he served until 2002 before transitioning to the Ohio Senate. Known for his bipartisan approach and deep understanding of policy, Schuring was instrumental in pension reform and fiscal oversight, earning the respect of colleagues across the aisle. He returned to the House in 2011 and later to the Senate in 2018, becoming Ohio's second longest serving lawmaker. Schuring's tenure included serving as interim speaker of the Ohio House in 2018 during a critical period of transition. A committed advocate for his constituents, Schuring championed pragmatic policies, from safeguarding public retirement systems to opposing restrictive voter ID laws. His approach to governance emphasized collaboration and long-term solutions, hallmarks of his impactful career. Beyond politics, Schuring was a devoted family man. Married to Darlene Newkirk since 1975, with whom he raised two children. Known for his humility and kindness, he remained deeply connected to his community in Stark County, contributing to local causes and mentoring future leaders. Kirk Schuring passed away at the age of 72 after battling pancreatic cancer. His legacy as a statesman, mentor, and advocate for good governance endures, inspiring those who seek to serve with integrity and purpose. Tributes to Kirk Schuring. Number two, Susan Pitt, a trailblazing swimmer and world record holder, dedicated her life to excellence in the pool and advocacy for women in sports. Born on June 18, 1948, in Highland Park, New Jersey, Pitt was raised in a family that championed her athletic pursuits. By age 15, she shattered the world record in the 200-meter butterfly, 
clocking an astonishing 229.1 in 1963. Pitt's meteoric rise continued as she represented the United States at the 1964 Tokyo Olympics at just 16 years old. Though she swam in the preliminary heats for the gold medal winning US 4x100 meter medley relay team, Olympic rules at the time denied her a medal. Nevertheless, her contribution remained pivotal. In 1965, she was named New Jersey High School Athlete of the Year, though her recognition highlighted the systemic gender inequities in sports as she received her award away from the spotlight. After enrolling at the University of Vermont in 1966, Pitt faced limited opportunities for female swimmers. Determined to compete at the 1968 Olympics, she transferred to Rutgers University, training with the men's team, a testament to her resilience. At 20, she became the second oldest female swimmer on the US team and was elected captain, exemplifying her leadership and dedication. Pitt continued to inspire throughout her career, setting a U.S. master swimming record in the 200-meter individual medley in 1973. Beyond her athletic achievements, she was a vocal advocate for equality, paving the way for future generations of female athletes. Susan Pitt passed away on November 23, 2024, at the age of 76. Her legacy as a pioneer in swimming and a symbol of perseverance remains a beacon of inspiration. Tributes to Susan Pitt, What's Trending on the Internet? News 1. Ron Ely, the beloved actor known for his portrayal of Tarzan in the 1966 NBC series, passed away on September 29, 2024, at the age of 86. His death certificate, released nearly two months later, confirmed the cause of death as end-stage heart disease, a condition that weakens the heart's ability to pump blood effectively. Ely's daughter, Kirsten, shared that her father passed away peacefully at home surrounded by family. She posted an emotional tribute on Instagram, calling him one of the greatest men the world has ever known. Kirsten described Ely as a hero, actor, writer, coach, and family man who left an extraordinary legacy of kindness and inspiration. Ron Ely's acting career spanned decades, with notable appearances in South Pacific, 1958, and the remarkable Mr. Pennypacker, 1959 before securing his iconic role as Tarzan. In the series, Ely became famous for performing his own stunts, enduring injuries such as broken shoulders and lion bites, a testament to his dedication and adventurous spirit. Beyond acting, Ely was admired for his mentorship and positive influence on those around him. Kirsten lovingly reflected on their bond, saying, to me, he hung the moon. Ron Ely's legacy endures through his groundbreaking work in entertainment and the countless lives he touched. His contributions to television and his spirit of perseverance will continue to inspire future generations. News 2. A teen who experienced the ride of a lifetime earlier this year, courtesy of Ford CEO Jim Farley, has passed away after a years-long battle with cancer. Joseph Tigerdine, who had been fighting osteosarcoma since 2019, died on Friday, November 22nd, surrounded by family. Joseph's father, Joe Tegardeen, announced the news on social media, reflecting on the joy and gratitude of being Joseph's dad. Words cannot express the depth of grief, nor the tremendous joy that he is no longer suffering, he wrote. The father also thanked the online community for their unwavering support during Joseph's journey. Earlier this year, Ford CEO Jim Farley gave Joseph an unforgettable experience at the Ford Performance Racing School in Charlotte, NC. The teen, a car enthusiast, was thrilled to ride in a Ford Mustang Dark Horse, an experience he insisted on attending despite his health challenges. Dad, I don't care if you have to roll me in on a gurney, I'm going, Joseph told his father. The trip included custom helmets and a day filled with smiles and excitement. He had the most energy I'd seen in months, Joe shared, describing the moment as bittersweet but unforgettable. Joseph's family focused on creating meaningful memories during his battle, including gifting him a Mustang, fulfilling one of his dreams, 
a celebration of life will be held in Springville, Utah on December 6th, honoring a young man whose courage and joy inspired many. News 3. The father of missing Yellowstone worker Austin King is holding on to hope as he plans a renewed search effort for his son next summer. King, 22, disappeared in September after failing to return from a backcountry trip to Summit Eagle Peak, according to Yellowstone National Park officials. King was last heard from on September 17th, when he called friends and family from the peak. A note he left in the mountains registry detailed the extreme weather he endured, describing rain, sleet, and relentless wind. When he missed his scheduled boat pickup three days later, the park launched a search and rescue mission. However, the operation was scaled back in October as conditions worsened, shifting to a recovery effort. Austin's father, Brian King Henke, shared his determination to continue the search, despite the challenges. Yellowstone is unforgiving in the winter, he told The Independent. I know it's more of a recovery than anything, but it's just knowing that he's out there. Brian remains optimistic, believing Austin could have sought refuge in remote hunting cabins scattered across the region. These cabins, often stocked with blankets, firewood, and food, offer a glimmer of hope. Planning for a large-scale search in July 2025, Brian is fundraising and coordinating volunteers to resume efforts once the snow melts. I believe in the impossible, he said, adding that his focus remains on honoring his son's memory. I've been through a roller coaster of emotions, but as dad, I have to stay strong. News 4. A kayaker in his 60s is recovering after a harrowing 20-hour ordeal on Tasmania's Franklin River that required the amputation of his leg to save his life. According to Tasmania police, the man, an international visitor, became trapped when his leg became wedged between rocks in a fast-moving section of the river on November 22. Emergency crews were alerted around 3.30 p.m. local time, and rescuers worked tirelessly overnight to free him. Despite their best efforts, the man remained partially submerged in the rapids, with medical teams by his side providing care and support throughout the night. On the morning of November 23rd, with the man's condition deteriorating, a critical decision was made to amputate his leg to facilitate his rescue. The delicate procedure was carried out on site by medical professionals using specialized equipment. Following the operation, the man was safely airlifted to the Royal Hobart Hospital, where he remains in critical condition. This was an extremely challenging and technical rescue operation, said Acting Assistant Commissioner Doug Oosterloo. Every effort was made to extract the man before the difficult decision to amputate. The professionalism and commitment of all emergency responders is to be commended. Oosterloo expressed gratitude to everyone involved in the rescue, highlighting the teamwork and dedication displayed under such trying circumstances. The Franklin River, known for its rugged beauty, served as the backdrop for this extraordinary effort to save a life. News 5. Police in Maine continue to search for 13-year-old Stephanie Dameron nearly two months after she vanished. Stephanie was last seen on September 23rd, walking out of her home in New Sweden and heading into nearby woods, according to the Maine State Police. She was reported missing the following day. Authorities have now released additional photos of Stephanie to aid in their search. While the photos appear to show her at a younger age, police say the most recent image is from the summer of 2024, where she is seen with a flower in her hair. Stephanie is described as 5 feet 0 inches, 130 pounds, with green eyes and shoulder-length brown hair. She was last seen wearing blue jeans, a long-sleeve blue shirt, and black Harley Davidson hiking boots. Stephanie's parents, Christopher and Lisa Marie Dameron, were not home when she disappeared. They shared that Stephanie had an argument with her sister before walking off. Living half a mile into the woods, the family initially thought nothing of her absence due to her familiarity with the area. Extensive search efforts have been conducted by the Maine Warden Service and Police K-9 units, covering large areas near Stephanie's last known location. Volunteers have also joined the effort, with some organizing through a Facebook group dedicated to finding her. Please keep sharing and keep your eyes open, Stephanie's mother wrote on social media. Authorities continue to investigate leads both locally and beyond, as hope remains for her safe return. News 6. Jay Leno is back in action and feeling optimistic after a recent tumble that left him with a broken wrist and facial bruises. The comedian, 74, hosted the inaugural Amfayar Las Vegas benefit on Friday, November 22nd, where he assured attendees he was doing well following his fall. I'm feeling good, 
Leno said to reporters on the red carpet. I've got a broken wrist, but I'm all right. The event, held at the Wynn Las Vegas, honored Sylvester Stallone and Jennifer Flavin Stallone for their philanthropic contributions. The former Tonight Show host recently revealed he fell while walking down a hill to a nearby restaurant during a trip to Pennsylvania. I said, well, the hill doesn't look that steep, Leno told TMZ. Boom, 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 I rolled down, hit my head on a rock. Despite the mishap, he performed shows in Pennsylvania and California just days later. At the AMFAR event, Leno stuck to the mission of raising funds for AIDS research. Helping auction off luxury cars and tours of his famed car collection, he successfully sold two garage tours for $75,000 each. I get to go there free, he joked with the crowd. The evening was a star-studded affair, featuring guests like Michael Fassbender and Tommy Hilfiger. While Leno didn't comment on his injuries during the event, his focus on supporting a worthy cause made it clear he's not letting his recent fall slow him down. News 7. Gurdia Bryra is embracing life and celebrating her newfound health after a challenging breast cancer journey. The Real Housewives of Miami star, 46, shared her uplifting outlook during Bravo Fan Fest on Saturday, November 23rd, revealing she is now cancer-free. We're thriving, she said with confidence. It's onward from here, baby, cancer-free. I'm living my best life, day by day. Abraira was diagnosed with stage 1B, estrogen receptor positive breast cancer in March 2023 after her gynecologist discovered a tumor during a routine mammogram. She underwent a lumpectomy, four rounds of chemotherapy, and 20 radiation sessions, completing her treatments in November 2023. Since then, she has embraced a shaved head, calling it empowering and a bold step in reclaiming her identity. I feel beautiful because of it, she told people, adding humorously, Hot flashes are bad. The star credits her family, particularly her husband Russell, for being her pillar of support. Calling him an angel, Abrera shared that their bond has deepened through the ordeal and they are now focused on getting our groove back after six surgeries. Abrera's journey hasn't been without challenges, including complications from surgery, but she remains focused on the positives. With her sons, Miles and Liam, by her side, She's cherishing quality family time and stepping into what she calls her me era. I'm unapologetically living for me now, she said, a sentiment that resonates with fans worldwide. Number one, Eiji Yanagisawa, a gifted voice actor celebrated for his remarkable contributions to anime, video games, and live action dubbing, left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Born in Tokyo, Japan, Yanagisawa grew up with a passion for storytelling and the performing arts, ultimately finding his calling as a voice actor. Yanagisawa brought life to numerous beloved characters, including Genzo in Naruto, Professor Ulen Hibiki in Mobile Suit Gundam Seed, and Okabe Sensei in The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. His diverse portfolio spanned iconic series like Code Geass, Samurai Champloo, Digimon Frontier, and Orphan, demonstrating his unparalleled range and ability to embody complex personalities. Beyond anime, Yanagisawa's talents extended to video games, lending his voice to titles such as Naruto, Ultimate Ninja, and Tales of Zestiria. He also enriched Western live-action projects through Japanese dubs, working on classics like Lethal Weapon 3 and Platoon. Despite his vast career, Yanagisawa was deeply humble, always expressing gratitude for the love and support of his fans and colleagues. Off the screen, he was known for his kindness, dedication, and mentorship to aspiring voice actors, fostering the next generation of talent in Japan. Yanagisawa's sudden passing due to a brainstem hemorrhage at the age of 57 was a profound loss to his loved ones and the global entertainment community. His agency, Production Baobab, honored his wishes with a private funeral for family and close friends, ensuring a dignified farewell. Eiji Yanagisawa leaves behind a legacy of unforgettable performances and a timeless contribution to the art of voice acting. His voice will continue to resonate in the hearts of fans worldwide. Tributes to Eiji Yanagisawa.
Matthew Byers was a dynamic talent manager and beloved figure on The Real Housewives of Potomac, where his charisma and dedication shone brightly.